Welcome back to my channel. Today we're changing the brakes on the GT86. So if you own an FRS, BRZ, BRZ, however you want to call it, one of these, and you just need to know how to do this, stick around, check it out, because I'm going to do it too, and it's the first time that I've done it on this car. So there's probably little differences between all the other cars I've done, and but this way we get to see it firsthand together. Here's what we're working with today. We got some Pro Max, Roto Max rotors. That's for the rear. And for pads, we got a set of Bosch pads, ceramic formula. I told them to give me the best they got from the local parts store. I hope this is the best. Ow, dang. I was poking out. Put a hole in me. So we're gonna run these on the back. And we've got these for the front. This is my first brake change on the car. It's at about 74,000 kilometers right now. Miles, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know. And the back brakes are totally cooked. The front ones I think are still good, which is weird because I thought cars always burnt out the front brakes first, but these turns out to the back. I guess that's a new car thing. They most of them do it now. So we're just gonna change all four because everything's looking pretty crusty. I do have winters here. I'm right in Montreal, Canada. So I have to deal with the winter. Because of my job, I actually have to travel more in the winter and more often, so I'm driving through the worst conditions possible. These rotors, they're pretty toast, pretty finished. They're getting crusty, they're ugly. So we're just gonna change them all in one shot. I could have probably got away with just changing back pads, but we'll do the whole thing, and I figure I'd bring you guys along for the ride to see how it's done and see what we're gonna do. What you need to do. So I gotta be completely honest with you guys. I did not have a good time filming this one. I did not enjoy making this video. So first things first, we're gonna jack the car up on some jack stands for your safety, not mine. So this is not an old car, but like I mentioned, it has 74,000 kilometers in it and she drives a lot in the winter time. So I just wanna throw a bit of WD-40 on the center hub here so that when it's time to pop this off, hopefully around the edge here and stuff, it won't be so, so bad. And these brakes are scrap anyway, as you can see, they're pretty torched. And here you can see with the light. So, yeah, they're pretty crusty. They're pretty nasty for this car's a 2017. Hmm. Can't believe it's already that old. Anyway, a little spray spray up in the front, in the back, all around, just to try to make our lives easy. Like I said, these brakes are all gonna be changed. Doesn't matter if we get any kind of grease on them, any kind of lubricant. We're gonna clean the rest after. I just want this to make everything a bit easier. Tool wise should be pretty simple, 14 mil on a ratchet, you're good to go. That's basically all you're gonna need, aside from a couple bolts that help you get that disc off. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, so let's get back here and look at what we got. This is behind the caliper. We're gonna take these, we're gonna take the pads out first. So I guess I could have used a short socket, but anyways. Crack those loose, crack the bottom ones loose. You can't really see what I'm filming in here, guys, so. I hope it's working out. Now that that's loose, we actually take that out by hand. Not bad. These gallopers were painted by hand also. Not powder coated, painted. I'm gonna have to do something with that, but we gotta try to figure out how to rebuild brake calipers first and find out where to get the rebuild kits. So we've got our two 14 mil bolts out. Go pop this off, wiggle it. Hide your caliper up somewhere safe. We're not gonna mess it up. And here we can pull out our pads. Now these are crusty, so actually, there's not really anything left of them. Hmm. Toasty. Okay, I'm just gonna pull off the other 14 mils in the back. I'll just take it all off in one shot. Let's bump this nice. Cut. And of course, every other YouTube video that I checked out and saw how they were done, they made it look really easy. Because it should be easy, and it is easy, but I struggled. Okay, so the top one is coming off by hand. This is for the slider bracket and everything. But the bottom one, still a little stiff. Means if I put two hands in. Yeah, no, it's just being. Maybe it's dirty. 
from all those winters and all that crap. disc you're gonna have these holes here you can thread some bolts into and then by tightening these bolts it'll push on the plate so you can pop off your disc without having to shake it around all crazy and get frustrated and fight it so you just torque these puppies down I should probably got a ratchet instead that would have made more sense So let's take everything over the bench because I'm sweating my ass off right here. These are the old ones. They're pretty crusty, pretty chunky. Pretty messed up. Not too warm on the inside, I haven't done too much handbrake. This is from the back. We got some Bosch. We got new pins, new pads. Brake lubricant, very important. No sticker. Discs. The struggle is real. I try to make it look good though. I took them both off. I only showed you when taking off one side, but it's the same process over and over. These look great. So let's compare new pads to our old ones. Have a look at this nice new stuff. This is how thick the pads are supposed to be. That's how th thick those ones were. And well, this one, hmm, this is the pad that pushes on the piston. So it should go in. And this one was on the outside. Now this outside one, it's not so bad. So something was going on in this caliper on the driver's side. It wasn't moving like it's supposed to. We're gonna clean everything up and hopefully that helps. All right, so we're gonna prepare to put the new setup in. I want to give these a quick spray with some brake cleaner. We got the 313 Clean Flow. The idea here just to clean these off is just to give them a quick wipe with the alcohol that's in this brake cleaner. Should take any sort of rust, like repellent sort of deal that they might have on these discs because I think it might get a little gummy in your brake pads and stuff. So just to make sure we're good and clean and safe. Clean that off. My dirty hands ruin the clean look of the rotor, but what do you want to do? Next up, we got these fancy ass deals. We're gonna put our new pins in here. The new pads are gonna slide on these, so you gotta make sure they're nice and clean. That's why they always give you new ones. They're nice, they're good, they're smooth, they're gonna move. So, as far as I know, you just jam these suckers in by hand. I'm gonna put it in the right way now. And it was kind of the same battle for all four corners. So I'm wondering, am I doing something wrong here? Yeah, so the long part goes down towards the bottom and I'm pretty sure you can just squeeze them in their spot. That's how I did it with the other one, worked out all right. Click. I'm doing this wrong, there's a technique for it. Put it in the comment section. Help me out. I could have taken the time to clean these off real nice and powder coat them, but I have to drive the car to work tomorrow. We don't have time for that. And if I'm gonna start powder coating brackets for the brake calipers, I'd like to do the entire caliper. And that would require a little rebuild kit and stuff like that, which I do not have right now. So we're gonna hold off on that right now. I'm just gonna get these puppies on so I can get to work tomorrow. All right, so that's on. We can set our brake pads inside of here. Now they gave us this little packet of brake lube. We're gonna use it. I'm gonna put a little bit on the ends here where the pad slides inside that bracket I just showed you. The little clips we just put in. Put a little there. So this side is facing the car. This is where the bolts are. This is where the piston's gonna come out of. We're just gonna put a little bit of grease where the piston's gonna rub on it. That way it'll kinda keep it moving freely and nice and good. Try not to get anywhere you're gonna be on your brakes. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did get it to work eventually, and it is working fine now, but I mean, mother. This other side, I'm gonna do lines on the outside here where the caliper's gonna hit. Let's see if it 
helps the longevity of it. Gives it a bit more life, maybe. Okay, I'm done fighting with them. They're in. So we're gonna install the disc back on and these breakers. I'm gonna put this back on and you might wanna line up. You see the spots where we put those bolts through to push it off? We'll try to line that up the best we can. And the port here is lined up to there. So just throw this back in the same way we found it. Take the plug off the old one, put it back. Now we can slide our piece back on with the pads in it. And reinstall our 14 mil bolts. Now, you want to put a little bit of grease on this, preferably copper grease. That'll help it not rust up too bad and it's going to protect it from being stuck in there next time you try to get it off because stuff works good and like I said Montreal Canada right so we got all kinds of winters to do so I'm gonna put these on just snug by hand first put the caliper on and then we're gonna torque everything I'm pretty into torque specs especially lately as I'm growing older and starting to learn how important it is uh, it's something I really pay attention to we're gonna get the caliper on but before it goes on we're gonna have to compress this piston down I'm gonna use this clamp problem is it doesn't quite fit on the piston very well. This is actually about the same size as the hole in the piston, so it goes inside and throws it off. We use this old brake pad that we had to bust the plate. Just put it on there for a little bit of a little bit of a point to a jacking point basically, you know. If I could do this right, maybe one day we'll get it done. I did not enjoy filming this video. that piston nice and flush on there. And then it should fit nice and easily over top of that. <laughs> now this should fit nice and easy over top. Make sure your sliders are out of the way. And we slide the other set of 14 mil bolts back in there. All right, so we go to the back here. It's a pretty awkward spot to get in there with the torque wrench, but Gotta be done. Whoops. Sorry guys. Now these bolts are big ones for the that holds everything. See so you gotta torque them at 50 pounds. That's what I found on the internet. Might not be right, but. Then the other two, we just get away with torquing them down at about 20 pounds each. That's the one that connects your caliper to your slider deal. And then the back end is done, pretty much ready to put everything back together on the back. Check out on the side. Like I mentioned before, I didn't show you both sides because it's the exact same process, so it's pretty easy. So now let's move on to the front. Now the bolts for this part here are actually 17. The back is 14 and 14. This one is 14 for the caliper and 17 for the caliper bracket. It's stupid me paid for a warranty. I think that was a really bad idea because I am probably better off fixing this on my own and all the parts that I need. It is a Toyota. It's pretty tough so far. Alright, that's good, that's good. Now to get the disc off, we're gonna do the same concept. We're gonna use the bolts and the holes right there. If you do this part, you wanna make sure that you go in there evenly on each side, because if you just torque one like crazy, it's gonna probably have a hard time coming off. It's not gonna come off straight. You want it straight and level, so we just kinda of do the best we can with turning them at the same. You know, give each one a couple turns, go back and forth. There we go. Disgusting. I got them out. You don't want to know how. So now before we replace this stuff, let's check out the hardware. Cool instructions. Well, the easy way to tell is one has tabs on the back and the other one doesn't. So let's just get right back in there. I want to clean this out a little bit first though. I had a bit of trouble with the last one. And then this one obviously goes here. So I'm going to use this. This is the right path. You don't want to get this on the pad itself or the disc. It's going to mess up your braking. So 
So if you do happen to get any on, like I actually got on one of the other ones, spray it off with a bit of brake cleaner. You should be good. Okay, cool. So now that that's on, this pad was on this side, so this is obviously where the friction is. We'll match that by putting some of this goop on here too. This side, pretty much the same deal. Now. So before we put that back on, we got our new disc. Do a little, little clean clean with the brake. Let's go throw this back on the car. All right, I'll start getting this back on. I'll try not to block your view too much. So once again, we have the holes pretty similar to where they were. Then we can slide on our caliper bracket with our new pads in it. back in there with the torque wrench because the caliper brackets at the front need to be torqued at about 60 pounds. Put the bottom one. Okay, we're good there. And these ones, just like the back, we're gonna torque those at 20. All right, so we got the brakes on. All the corners. Looking good, just gotta put the tires on. And then, get it back on the ground. We're done. They look good. Nice and shiny. Time for a little test run. Now, unfortunately, recently, very recently, I broke my tripod. So, so I don't have a mount anymore. Nothing to hold the camera up. So I'm just gonna have to hold it. Bear with me. We're just gonna go for a little ride down the road. Make sure the brakes actually work and stop the car because I have to drive to work tomorrow morning. Feel okay. This all worked out pretty, it was terrible. <laughs> I did not enjoy filming this video. I didn't have a good time. Uh, things were more rusted than I thought they would be. It's only a 2017. Like I said, it's got 74,000 kilometers on it. Not that much, but considering the crap that I got to drive through all year long, I guess that's a lot. So I'm going to have to really think about maintaining this thing better, even though it does have full warranty. And then we'll go from there couple things that I learned today is that uh, you need to give yourself more time than you think it's gonna take I figured this job would take me like two hours easy peasy took more like uh, almost five and I need a lift I really need a lift I'm so sick or tired of like climbing around and in between cars and everything else and oh what have you but uh, okay I'm gonna try to put the RX-7 inside the garage quick before it starts to rain because Kind of hard to see in the camera, but I'm hearing thunder and 
Oh, we got a couple speckles already. Look it. I'm gonna have a couple watermarks on there. So, I'm gonna fire this puppy up. Should be still kind of warm. Let's see what that says. 40 degrees. Not that warm. Gotta let it warm them up before you shut them down so they don't flood. So, should go through that real quick, right? Okay, so just to get through that brake job deal, the thing, real quick, you're gonna need a 14 millimeter, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter. The back end, the everything in the back comes apart by 14s. I took two little 10 millimeter bolts to push the plate out, push out the disc. That helped a lot. I used a clamp and a little plate to squish down the caliper, squeeze it back in, put the piston back inside the actual caliper. You're gonna need one of those. You're gonna to have to need some brake cleaner or something just in case you make a couple mistakes. It's not a bad idea to get some more of this and keep it around in your shop. What they give you is not very much and uh, I made a total mess of it. In the front end, you need a 17 mil to get your caliper bracket off. Your caliper is just like the back, it's gonna be 14. You might wanna clean all those sliders and check all that out. Something that I didn't do, that I should have done, was check my brake res reservoir to make sure that when I squished the piston back into the caliper that it wasn't overflowing the reservoir and pouring brake fluid everywhere. In my case, it should not because I've not added any more brake fluid than it came in stock. And the brakes are all back to stock positions. So in that case, I should be okay. Write this down, torque specs for the back of the, the back brakes. The caliper bracket takes 50 pounds front brakes the caliper bracket needs 60 pounds and the calipers themselves on the slider you torque those about 20. Don't forget to do that torque your wheels 75 to 85 to 90 pounds roughly considering your car whatever however you like to do it. I always run mine 85 and uh, I think that's about it boys so hit the like thing on here just in case you have to come back to this video it'd be much easier to find you can just go through all your like videos and find it in case you need to reference it for something else. I'm gonna try to redo this later on, probably in the fall or something like that, and do a much better job because this was kind of sloppy, kind of rushed. It was in a tight place, I'm all crusty, dirty. It's mega humid outside. It actually really, really sucked to do this, and it didn't work out as smoothly as I thought it would, so in the fall, I'll redo it and make it all winterproof because I'm gonna have to drive it all winter long. I'll make the best of it, so thanks for sticking around. I hope I kind of made it look good, but that's basically the idea of how you're supposed to be able to change your brakes. It's not how to do it, but that's kind of how you got to go about it in a way. And at least uh, if I did anything right, I gave you proper torque specs, hopefully, and proper tool sizes, the sockets, right size, everything. Good? You cool? You're all right? Okay. Well, ciao, boys. If you can't fix it.